Okay, now let me show you what our operating principles are. RDI works through consultants, through trained consultants, who help families, help parents and children to develop a guiding relationship. And they work from these principles. First of all, they have to keep their focus on what is going to make a difference in the long run. It's nice to see instant things. It's nice to be able to use the child's strengths. In other words, often children with ASD are very good at static things, and they can learn rote things. And you can get them to speak and say a lot of rote things and build up vocabulary words. And that looks wonderful if you're feeling desperate and you've not seen any changes and you're wondering if anything can happen. But in the long run, it's not going to make a difference. What's going to make a difference is if you can fundamentally help them to learn how to use their mind, how to develop a real self, and, and ultimately how to impact their neurology, their neural connectivity, their neural integration. Right? So we have to keep that focus doesn't mean we don't recommend other things, or sometimes people just need to see something right away, but it means we have to keep the emphasis on what's going to make a difference for this person when they go out into the world and they have to survive and they have to thrive in the world. Second, our consultants are very focused on, on knowing that people are going to enter into intervention with different degrees of developmental readiness. Everyone's not the same. You can't offer one program that fits all. Right? The kids are going to have little different levels of readiness. Families are going to be ready for different things. So we have to provide multiple entry points, multiple ways to start that match what the family needs at that time. Third, there's no such thing as a generic guiding environment. What we know is that these children have vulnerabilities. They have issues that have gone on with their neurology, with potentially with a whole variety of things that combine. And those things are very different. They can be motor issues, they can be sensory issues, they can be um, social cueing issues, they can be, you name it. <laughs> and, and each child comes in, and even before they're diagnosed with autism, they come in with those problems that have contributed to the breakdown, to the lack of formation of that guiding relationship, but they're unique for each child. There's no one thing that contributes to a diagnosis of ASD. That's what we're learning from all of the prospective sibling research and the retrospective family research, is that it is a cumulative model that is unique for each child, each infant, if you will. And so when we're working with people, when we're starting to work with people, we have to acknowledge that unique profile that they're coming in with, that that child's coming in with. Right? If, we're going to make them, if we're going to make them more available for a guiding relationship, right, we have to understand what is creating an obstacle for them. And we have to reduce that. Doesn't, and that means we can't be the ones always doing everything. That means there's an incredible important role for speech pathologists, for OTs, for, you know, whether it's nutritional, whether it's this, whether that. But it's got to be based not on one size fits all. Like everybody does not need the nutritional counselor. Everybody does not need this person. But depending on what that profile is, that unique profile that's keeping that child from benefiting from what their parents have to offer, that's what we have to address. And we can't do that, but we have to help figure out what that is, what that unique profile is, right? So while we're teaching parents to modify what they're doing to make, to make it easier for that child to benefit from guiding, we also have to acknowledge the need to help that child's brain to be more available to benefit from guiding. It has to be both going on at the same time. And for some kids less, some kids more, many kids, each child has to be different. We have to take the time to understand that. It's not something that's easy. Each child is a unique version of ASD, each one. Okay? We have to maintain progress along a developmental pathway. And we are very committed to development, a developmental model where each mastered step that you take provides the foundation for a new step, okay? So mastery builds on mastery, step by step. And along with that, we have to continue to do what we call dynamic assessment. Assessment cannot be a one-time thing. It's a continuous process where as that child and as that family makes one step, goes one step ahead, one little step at a time, because we want to, we want to success breeds success, right, that we continue to assess what's going to work the best, what is the optimal next step. There's a lot of areas that you can focus on, as I said, and you have to stop and think through what is the reasonable next step to go. You can't do it out of a manual. So you can't have one size fits all. You can't say every child's going to have this, this, and this, or once you've achieved this, everybody should go on to this next step. You can't do a sequence like that. Yes, it's easier to say it that way, but it's not true. 
It's not real. 